You're watching the Sporting Time Show with host Doug Thompson. Sponsored by Jewelry Barn and Pawn Shop. Good evening and welcome to the Sporting Time Show. I am Doug Thompson. Thank you for spending a few minutes of your time with me this evening. And of course, I have two really special guests. My first one is a young man that I've known for years and is making his way through coaching and the athletic world. Welcome. I uh, love to welcome in Nakarius Fan, who is my guest host tonight. Nakarius, welcome to the show. Thank you, man. Thank you for having me. I Good to see that. you. You don't, you don't age. I mean, you, you look fantastic. What's going on? Thank my mother, I guess. <laughs> thank, thank the man upstairs for that. Good I, genes. Appreci I appreciate that. Yeah. It, is, it is good to see you. I know that, um, and we're going to start, we're going to talk a little bit about everything that you're involved in with, with youth sports and kids. And, but I got to ask you because, you know, I, I so much enjoyed watching you play at the high school level, and then you went on to play at WKU. Uh, I'll never forget, and I know Paul Gray has a big spot in your heart, yeah. but Paul Gray took over two million photos uh, on his camera and, and when he was with us at the Sporting Times. And I always remember talking to Paul saying, hey, what is your favorite photo? And he would say the photo that he took of you when you went down to Georgia and played uh, in that, in that seven on seven, in the seven yeah. on seven, in the catch that you yeah. made, does it seem like high school was so many years ago for you? It does. When and that's that's because of everything that I've necessarily been in through my life, yeah. um, with you know from training, from life in general, yeah. from um, all the different stuff that I've had going on. It feels like you know it's been forever, but then again, and <laughs> it feels like it's been you know yesterday. So. Um, you know, there's a mixture of, you know, time that's went by. You know, high school for me in, in football was, was such an important time. I mean, it was a, a growth time for me. It was, it gave me structure. Um, and I did play college, but not at the level that you played. When you, when you transitioned from high school to college football, for you, what was the biggest kind of like, wow, moment for you as far as transitioning the difference between the, the high school and college biggest thing is I think the the speed of the game right the speed of the game when I was at Bowling Green High School obviously I was surrounded by great players uh, great coaching staff with coach Wallace and you know my position coach Tyler Siddons and all those different guys who gave me the knowledge you know so I was there mentally and mentally prepared as far as knowing the game of football but when it came to the strength when it came to the speed you yeah. know that's what was a big jump I remember I went to college at 167. I was a senior at high school at 167. Uh, my summer going to WKU, I put on 16 pounds. Wow. And you still maintain pounds. the speed. And still maintain the speed. I think I was probably a little bit, probably a little bit more side to side quicker. And that's just because when I was in high school, I probably should have a little bit more. But, um, <laughs> you know, the weight room, you know, is, it, it wasn't, you know, a main priority to me. And I had to learn that quick going to yeah. the next level because guys were much bigger than me. Well, I mean, you, you, you had every accolade you could get in high school, Mr. Kentucky Football. I mean, you had everything as far as what you earned in high school. And then, of course, the college career was really fun to watch you uh, return uh, kickoffs and, and punts and, and just, you know, the receiving things that you did. And one of the things about you and talking to you before the show and, and knowing things about you, you're, you're a, you understand the game. Right, you understand how it works offensively, where guys ought to be, how to get the most out of uh, the players that are on the team. And we got about 60 seconds left in this segment, but kind of tease us with a little bit of what you're doing now. What I do now is um, I run my own training business. And when I got done playing, after um, I didn't make it to the next level as I dreamed of my whole life, but I figured, you know what, let me get back. Let me get back and let's do it through sports. So what I do is I train athletes. And with the training, it's not, you know, just training. You know, you got maybe trainers that just train athletes. Right. What I try to allow them to be is an extra source when it comes to, um, you know, actually knowing the game, not just getting better and perfecting your craft, being the best version of yourself, but knowing the game. Um, also help kids with college recruitment. Um, I allow that to be a resource with me knowing many college coaches. Yeah. Why not reach out to them? Hey, I have a kid that you might be interested in. Um, so just different stuff like that and you know if anything I can help them with in life 
you know, I try to give him the best advice that I can. Well, I know, and we're going to take a short break. When we come back, Coach McCoy will be here. But I know that you, you've, you're involved with a lot of different uh, youth organizations. You're, you're the head coach and, and participating in a lot of different things. So when we come back after I talk to Coach McCoy, you and I will get into that. Let's take a short break. When we come back, we're going to transition over to a little basketball. We're going to take a short break. More of the Sporting Times are here on WNKY, NBC 40. We'll be right back. Welcome back. As promised, my first guest is the head coach of the Greenwood Gators basketball team and coach, Will McCoy. Welcome to the show. Hey, thanks, Doug. Appreciate it, y'all having me over. It's great having you in studio. We have been doing Zoom interviews for two years, and I am so thankful that we are beyond. Zoom is great, right? Right. It's cool. Right. It is. But man, it is. It's just so much nicer to have you in studio. Yeah, it was a good tool. It, it wasn't as good when it was <laughs> the only resource we had, right? I know. Yeah. And, and you know, the other reason it's great having you in this year uh, in studio is the fact that, you know, we are about ready to get into district play. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll get to your big game Monday night against Warren Central, but, Coach, what a fantastic season you've had this year. And what has it been like for you? You knew going into the season you were going to have a, a very talented team. Mm -hmm. Now that we're towards the end of the regular season, what has it been like for you to be on the sidelines and watch these student athletes play? And it's been just an experience that I try to take day by day, not take any of it for granted, um, and just really enjoying every moment with these guys. You know, we're losing our eight seniors after this year that have meant so much to the yep. program, to the school, to myself personally. Um, and just to navigate the ups and downs with them this year has been just a great, great time, great run. Um, we hope to have a lot of basketball left to play, but wouldn't trade it for anything, man. It's been, been the best year of coaching in terms of just all-around experience that I've ever gotten to be a part of. But even before these these scenes, I mean, you you came into the 14th district and you you took the guys that you had that were young, mm -hmm. uh, inexperienced, and, and you still had a competitive team. They were just young, right? Um, right. And and now, like you said, you're 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 as of this show, you were 20, you're 21 and three. What an amazing record! Uh, and you're you're just in the the middle of a great 14th district. Uh, battling, which is, it's hard for me to wrap my, my, my head around the fact that, man, this district is just crazy good. It's a bear, man. You know, we were talking at school this morning, my athletic director, Mr. Dillingham, myself, um, we're currently ranked six in the state, Bowling Green's nine, Central's 12. <laughs> and if you look around the, ra the rankings, there's not, I don't think there's another region with three teams within that top 12 to 15 range statewide. So it's always, it's always a challenge, but this yeah. year it's, you know, you could argue it's even a little more special than normal. Yeah, and, and you look, you know, you talk about the, the rankings, but when you look even at the, the fourth region mm -hmm. and you look at the teams, the Metcalf counties of the world, Messer and the Clinton counties, mm -hmm. and they play in the 1A and the 2A, you know, uh, all-A uh, championship and so forth. Man, Russell, those teams are really competitive. Oh, yeah. I mean, you've got your, your, your Barons, your Franklins, your teams that are always around. Um, yeah. You know, even the, the other teams in our district, you know, South and East can, can beat anybody on any given night. Um, it, it, it's just, it's wide open, really. You know, it's going to be an exciting, exciting tournament at Dill Arena that, that we hope to get to and be a part of. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, it's weird when you say that at yeah. 21 and 3. I know. But there, there are some moving parts. Uh, does your sleep pattern change from the beginning of the season <laughs> to right now? Uh, yeah, it does. It does. You know, I after after wins or losses, my sleep patterns definitely change. I'm up later than I should and earlier than I should be, but it's part of it. You know, you gotta love it. A little yeah. extra caffeine as I came in here to the I studio saw. with today. Uh, but you know, it's just part of the challenge, and you've got to find got to find a way to put the time in and. 
I love it. You yeah. know, that's the thing about it is it's work, but I'm passionate about it. It's where it's, it's, I enjoy it, you know? And so when you're doing something you enjoy and love, I think that kind of radiates off you and it doesn't feel as much like work as it does just something you enjoy doing. Well, and, and I think, you know, coach, you, you are young. I mean, yeah. you're, you're young. Uh, you were uh, an ex-basketball player, a really good basketball player. So you, I mean, you can really relate. Yeah. And we got about 30 seconds left. But I mean, I think your students, your student athletes feel that, that passion. I, I try to make sure they do. You know, we remind them, man, I'd trade places with you in a heartbeat <laughs> if I could. Uh, that's probably when I sound a lot older than I am, but that definitely plays into factor. Yeah, well, no question about that. We're gonna take a short break. When we come back, more with Coach Will McCoy right here on the Sporting Times on WNKY, NBC40. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the show. Coach, I got to ask you, um, you have two Stennets on this team. And I think uh, I got to sit in the first year when they both were on team. I, I, did they start as freshmen? Uh, Cade, I think, got inserted in the starting lineup midway through his freshman year. Yeah. Um, I know Bracton, his sophomore year, my first year at Greenwood, played quite a bit, especially about halfway <laughs> through the year as well. So. So I had the opportunity to, I think, broadcast a couple of your games. Uh, Brent was out. But for whatever reason, I always thought they were brothers. Yeah. And then, for whatever reason, I transitioned to cousins. Yep. But they're not even related. No and they've got the exact same last name spelled the same way. Not super common in the Bowling Green area. And they're both Brack really good basketball Brackton's players. Brackton's number 12, Cade's 21. You know, it's their moms worked uh, just a few doors down from each other at Briarwood for years. It's a, it's a crazy, that, that question gets asked a lot. Um, but as you said, the thing they have in common is they can both really play some hoop and, and, and have helped us win a lot of games the last, last two, two and a half, three years. Well, not that you play the lottery, but I would imagine 12 and 21 numbers might play into those that 21 is my favorite number anyway, <laughs> so 12, 12 I'll have to add in there as well, I guess. Talk a little bit first about Kate Stennett. I mean, he's one of the, the, the players, even before when he was mm -hmm. a sophomore, yep. you could see the way he plays, but we talked off camera. I always thought, I look at him and I think of, of a throwback, hard-nosed player that just loves to dribble drive yep. and and create unbelievable shots. Yeah, he's 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 so hard-nosed, as you said, Doug. I mean, he's, he's tough as nails. He's a great teammate, great leader in our locker room. Um, you know, had a had an argument for a Mr. Basketball campaign going until his injury happened that he's working so hard to get back from. And yeah. Just uh, been honored to coach him the last three years. He's been the been the engine for us since I've taken over. And, and just, he's a guy that, that he's got big shoes to fill, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah, well he's, you know, uh, we've been doing it for 18 seasons and, and you can go back and you can look at great players over those 18 seasons that we've been involved in. And Cade would be one of those players that you just remember. Right, um, I agree with that. One of those guys that you know, but but you have you have a team. You've got four guys that are are double digits in mm -hmm. scoring. Right. Uh, so you know, Cade certainly shares the offensive spotlight yep. with his other players. Kind of talk about that. How how I, I, I don't want to use the word fun, but but how enjoyable is it to have? Uh, four guys and a deep bench that right. can come in and they can score. Uh, it's it's a it's a nice asset to have. You know, we we preach to to our team and our program. Uh, it's it's one of the things going up in our locker room during the remodels. We over me. Um, another motto we have is is pass up good shots, get great shots. And when you have an Aaron Brown, a Hunter Raymer, <laughs> a Mason Thornhill, a Luke Stansberry, a Jax Buchanan, a Lofton Howard. I, yeah. It's probably a little easier to do that, you know, yeah. when you got guys you can trust. But we've got, as you said, four guys in double digits. Uh, Lofton's right under that. Um, the football star who 
is a heck of a basketball player he's as well. Athlete, he's, he? he's had a double double every game since Cade's been out. So, uh, man, we're we're deep, you know, yeah. and that's something that I think makes has made us have such a special year. Yeah, uh, it's it's amazing. And, and look at I, I I can't let you go. We got about a minute and a half. Yep. I can't let you go without talking about the Valentine's Day. Uh, I'm not going to call it the sweetheart game, but right. it is kind of a, for right. the fans. Yeah, it's a huge game. It's a big one. Central Greenwood. It's a big one, and, and I'm going to start with we've we've got Warren East coming in Friday, yep. and we we are not overlooking that one. They always play us tough, um, and we have to take care of business there. Monday won't mean near as much. Yeah. Um, so um, it's a big game, man. You know. Greenwood could claim the one seed for the first time in district history uh, on Monday, uh, Friday and Monday. And we know over there they're going to be a really tough game for us. They played a super tight, obviously, double overtime yeah. classic at home. And, it's great. Uh, they've got a great team, a lot of depth as well. So excited for it, man. A lot on the line. It's going to be amazing. I think the Sporting Times is going to buy a big box of chocolates, and, yep. and the winner will get that. There we go. So either you or Coach Unso, who knows? <laughs> right. And you don't look like you eat much chocolate, but Coach. <laughs> hey, I, li I like some sweets. It, uh, it's awesome they have yeah. you here. We have run out of time, but. Man, it's been fantastic. Thank, Thank you. you very much for Thank coming Thank you guys today. for your coverage. Oh, it's been yeah. great. Thank you. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, Nicarius and I will wrap things up right here on The Sporting Times on WNKY NBC 40. Welcome back. I want to thank Coach McCoy and, of course, my special guest host, Nakarius Fant. You have been offered a lot of coaching uh, positions as you as you begin to spread out. People learn that you're doing what you're doing. Talk a little bit about Team Kentucky and your involvement and what you're doing there. Well, how that came up is um, um, I'm familiar with uh, Bronson, uh, Bronson, who's there, basically the Kentucky Middle School uh, director. Uh, he's over all that Team Kentucky FBU stuff. Yep. He reached out to me and he uh, asked me if I'd be interested in maybe uh, coaching and being on, you know, the staff for um, sixth, seventh, or eighth grade, you know, position. Um, I mentioned the interest that I had in that, and um, the head coach, Coach Corey Taylor, who's out of Louisville, who also was another, you know, guy that has a personal training business. Yeah. Um, he's the head coach of the sixth grade team. He got me a call, and I remember like it was just sure that he asked me. He said, "Fan." He said, um, I want you to come and be a part of the coaching staff that I have up here. I want you to coach the receivers, and I want you to help me with being an offensive coordinator. And, you know, when he called me, I was kind of shocked but not shocked <laughs> because I just, you know, months ago talked to, you know, that director. And um, when he gave me the call and I was like, yeah, I'd be honored to be able to, you know, coach this or in this, with this organization. Like I said, I'm not a coach. You know, I just train athletes. So to but see, you know the game. But I know the game. But to see him, you know, take the interest and, um, you know, offer me a position as basically a personal trainer and being a guy who has a resume of playing, you know, I felt like, you know, I was, I was really, you know, glad to be getting that notice. Right. Um, so I was with them. The experience was great. The organization is great. Um, <clears throat> hopefully every year from this point forward I can be a part of the organization um, if offered. But... Um, we got kids from everywhere, yeah. and it's good being a part of an organization like that because you know none of the kids. Yeah. And these kids are so young and don't really understand the game. So it's good to be able to teach and go through those practices on the weekends, get those friendships, those little bonds that you have with your players from all these different places. Yeah. And now that I'm done coaching after this first season, I still have parents from that team and you know kids who still reach out to me. Right. You know so. That definitely was a great experience for me, and um, you know that's a that's a great opportunity that I'm glad I could be a part of. So, and they're sponges anyway, right? I mean, they want right. to learn. They want to. How do you how do you give kids? How do you teach the young kids so that you don't over over teach them, right? That you don't get right. too technical, but yet they learn. So, when coming, I think to teaching the game and kids actually understanding, I think is at a certain age. You can't do it too young. You have to wait for, I think, a kid to get to a certain age to be able to actually talk football, as I say, 
right. and for them to understand what you're saying. Yeah. And I feel like at that certain age, whenever you do it and you apply that in them, which none of them really know the game to an extent, so it's good because they're all fresh. So whatever you're saying <laughs> to them, as long as you're teaching them the right stuff, it's going to be installed in them and they have no flaws. Yeah. So um, with teaching them, like I do with my training business, I started eight and nine years old. Um, I feel like that's a good age to where they can actually learn and understand the game of football. Yeah. When I teach them, I teach them like I'm going to teach a high school or a college kid, you know, and it's going to take a little longer for them to process it. Yeah. But when we go through all the different stuff and I'm teaching them what this is, you know, I do it a little bit simplified for my younger kids and I do my high school and college kids what they're going to be up against when they go to college. Yeah. Um, and the part of that is I don't want to be training an athlete and he not know the game of football and he's just playing. Right. So when I'm able to teach my high school, my college kids, when you go into a meeting room with a coach, he understands that this is a smart football player. So that kind of adds more to what type of player that you are. Yeah. Um, so that's the type of resources that I give to all the kids that train with me, not just the high school and college kids. We've got about a minute left, so I got two quick questions for you. At what age do you think uh, kids should, should begin lifting or begin? Um, I don't think you want to do it necessarily. I think you can do you know, lighter dumbbell work, you know, early, yeah. early ages. But when it comes to uh, bench pressing, when it comes to heavy lifting and type stuff like that, I think you should start to do that towards the end of your middle school uh, time because, like I said, you don't want to do it too early to where it cuts off your growth. All right, last question. We've got 30 seconds left. Five years from now, I've got more questions, but we've run out of time. <laughs> okay. Five years from now, what would you like to be doing? I'd like to be an offensive coordinator um, at a high school program or head coach at a high school program and um, hopefully here in the state of Kentucky. I'll tell you what, I think you're going to get there. I know you're going to get there. I talked to you yesterday about an offense. I won't talk about which one. It was like talking with Tony Romo. Whether you like Tony <laughs> Romo or not, he knows the game of football. The Carrius fan knows the game of football. It was so interesting listening to you. Give them a call. How do they reach you? we got 10 seconds. Quick. Uh, Facebook. Facebook, uh, Instagram, Twitter. Um, just type in my name and you'll, I'll, I'll come up. Thank you very much. We ran out of time. Thank you for joining me. See you next week. Same time, same place for Doug Thompson, the Carrius fan. Have a great week.